Good afternoon. I'm John Schuchin. I'm here in the chemistry laboratories at Wayne State University. I'm going to describe work that we're doing on a novel energy cell called the alkaline energy cell, which uses a fuel uh, which we've developed called ethanol. My colleagues working with me are Professor Charles Winters in chemistry and Professor Ming Cha Lai in mechanical engineering and David Coyle. There is uh, currently a great deal of interest in alternate fuels and finding a replacement for gasoline and oil. Uh, one of these is ethanol. Unfortunately, the ethanol that we have currently is made from corn. That process is well developed and it, while it produces ethanol, it's a very expensive product. As a result, we've been looking for a source of input material which was relatively cheap and we've looked at, for that reason at peat. Peat is a very interesting material. It's a uh, naturally occurring product. It's a, uh, derived from uh, vegetation, uh, which uh, actually resides in bogs in various locations. In Michigan, uh, we have the largest amount of peat in the country. And in fact, peat covers some 3% of the world's surface. It's a very interesting material because it's actually renewable. So you can farm and harvest this material. And it's, of course, very, very inexpensive. Now, we take this peat and convert it into ethanol. To do that, we have to break down the peat to a sugar which can be fermented. For that, we require two enzymes, and we found two particular enzymes that do this job very efficiently. Uh, after the uh, breakdown product is fermented, then we get an alcohol, which we call ethanol, peat ethanol, which is about 30% by volume. Uh, the material has a characteristic brownish tinge to it as a result of the peat in it. Uh, and it's this particular ethanol which we feel can be made very inexpensively, perhaps as low as a dollar a gallon. Once we have the ethanol, the question is how do we extract the energy out of it? Well, we could try to burn it in a classic uh, combustion engine, and I have my colleague here, Professor Ming Cha Lai from Mechanical Engineering, who will describe that process. Ming Cha. Well, once you have a fuel, then you can do it in many ways. For example, you can put in a combustor, like a furnace or like internal combustion engines that convert the chemical energy into thermal energy, then to mechanical energy. Or you can use it in other ways. And the other ways that we're exploring is actually getting more energy out by putting this ethanol into what's called a fuel cell, or what we term an alkaline energy cell. This is the unit that we're using, an alkaline fuel cell. Uh, it consists of a number of uh, cells stacked in series. Each one of these is, as uh, I've got in my hands here, uh, there are uh, two electrodes on either side, uh, and there's a space between them into which we place the uh, pethanol along with uh, potassium hydroxide. When we do that, we get an electrical energy out here via these two electrodes. So in summary, what we do is start with uh, peat, and we convert that by using enzymes and fermenting it into an alcohol, which we call peat ethanol. And we take this uh, ethanol and we put it into a fuel cell, into these input ports, and uh, we have potassium hydroxide, uh, as a, a liquid into which the uh, ethanol is put, and we get out an electrical energy on the terminals. We'll now go into the laboratory and we'll show uh, this cell working actually uh, and generating that electricity. Once we have the P cell, then we have, to, or the uh, fuel cell, then we have to try to run it. For that purpose, normally it runs with potassium hydroxide as the electrolyte, and we need a source of gas input. Uh, we have oxygen in the blue tank, hydrogen in the uh, red tank. Those are connected by hoses to the fuel cell. However, in our particular instance, where we're using the methanol, we actually shut the gases off, so we're not using any kind of input. It's a very important to note that. Instead, all we're doing is circulating the electrolyte, which is in that beaker, and it consists of a mixture of potassium hydroxide and methanol. And there's a pump which uh, circulates that through the fuel cell. Uh, when that occurs, then we start to see a, uh, a voltage being generated across the terminals. And that's uh, shown here in the uh, voltmeter here. This cell here is running at about 0.876 uh, 
uh, volts. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that this is a cell which doesn't require any external input of hydrogen or oxygen. It's totally self-contained. It is actually, if I can use the expression, burning the, the uh, ethanol and converting it directly into electricity. So we have a direct conversion process, which actually, as it turns out, is much more efficient than a classic potassium hydroxide electrolytic cell. Okay, so now we have the fuel cell operating here with the electrolyte in the beaker and the pump. Next to the pump is Monica, who's our assistant. She's the guardian of uh, the uh, methanol alkaline energy cell, which we've developed. Okay, so now we have a device which is generating electrical energy, actually considerable electrical energy. Uh, typically, we may see as much as 50 or 60 amperes uh, out of the cell. Admittedly, it's at low voltage, around one volt, as you can see from the voltmeter. But we want to utilize that energy in some kind of practical applications. There's a lot of work being done at present on using fuel cells in automobiles. Uh, but we don't want to get into that particular market area. Where we see our cells being applied are in small power supply situations. For example, electric tractors. And instead of using noisy gasoline engines, we would use a ethanol alkaline fuel cell powered device which would be burning the ethanol. Uh, golf carts, uh, forklift trucks, stationary power supplies for emergency home use. There are all sorts of power applications in the 10 kilowatt range that we feel we can do very well with this particular type of cell that we have. And finally, I'd like to thank the producer of this video, David Coyle, who's one of the members of the team on this project. Thank you, David.